stand, but your man saw it and threw the penalty. Hey, that's unbelievable! It really is, Matthew. Welcome to That's Good Sports, I'm Brandon Perna, and you may recall this moment from the 2021 NFL season. Ravens kicker Justin Tucker kicked a record-setting 66-yard game-winning field goal against the Lions, a truly insane thing to do on a very high-pressure kick. But we expect that because Tucker is a god. Oh, and it was one of the best moments from the 2021 NFL season. What you may have forgotten is that the Ravens should have been penalized the play before for a delay of game. Lions fans, of course, remember. And as much as I love Justin Tucker, I don't think he's making a 71 yarder. Okay, maybe he would, but still. Since it happened to the Lions, football fans forget that anything egregious occurred. The Ravens were given an extra 1.77 seconds to snap the ball and it cost the Lions a win. In remembering this atrocity, I stumbled down a very dark and terrifying rabbit hole. One that makes me believe that the Detroit Lions have been unfairly robbed of wins due to the worst NFL officiating. More disproportionately than any other team in the league, and I don't think it's close. The curse of Bobby Lane may be the strongest curse since the great Bambino. Today, I'll walk you through those horrific calls and non-calls against the Lions in an attempt to help you tap into a level of football empathy you didn't know you had. Let's go balls deep into the Lions. Hey, today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped, the global dare I say interstellar leader in men's testicular grooming and hygiene. Manscaped now offers the Platinum Package 4.0, which is the ultimate pube shaving and body washing kit. Think about it guys, you've got two balls and a penis. That's three. So if you order the Platinum Package, you can say I'm triple platinum. This comes with everything. The Lawnmower 4.0, which is Manscaped's best nether region hair trimmer yet. They added a light to it, which honestly is super helpful when you're down there grooming around your balls. And it is simply the best pube trimmer on the market. And I haven't used another body wash brand or shampoo brand since Manscaped introduced those items into the lineup and their aluminum free deodorant smells so good sometimes I try and sweat on purpose. <sighs> Come on, get out of sweat. The package also includes the weed whacker for your nose and ear hair. That's four of your five head holes. Can we get a toothpaste, Manscaped? You know the deal. Use my link below, manscaped.com slash goodsports to get 20% off your order, plus two free gifts and free international shipping. Now three of the most famous officiating blunders may be the tuck rule, the fail Mary, and the non-pass interference call that ultimately bounced the Saints from the playoffs in 2019. They blew the call. But all of those ref ball moments affected different teams. I can't explain why the Lions have been so unfairly prosecuted by NFL officials other than nobody pays attention since it's the Lions. Or that the Bobby Lane curse is incredibly real. Two defensive linemen on the Browns and had a broken leg. When he was traded to Pittsburgh in 1958, Lane was furious and allegedly placed a curse on the Lions. If that curse isn't real, then this is Mother Earth's way of balancing out the circle of life, where ultimately Dan Campbell will bury you under the sea. Because we'll tread water as long as it takes to bury you. Hmm. Dan Campbell may be mixing up metaphors there, kind of like the way officials mix up calls against the lions. In nature, lions prey on zebras devour them for tasty meals, and in the NFL, the zebras feast on the lions. 
which is probably why Detroit still gets the Thanksgiving game every year. I have done at least two videos on the Lions Torment, one in 2019 and one in 2015. I have been chronicling the abuse of Lions longer than PETA. Let me take you back to Thanksgiving 2012, Lions versus Texans. While fat ass Americans somehow figured out how to make turkey, a very lean meat into a 2000 calorie meal, this atrocity happened. Now you may recall from my 2012 video, Justin Forsett ripped off an 81 yard touchdown run against Detroit. The officials did not blow the play dead when it looked like Forsett was down, which I'm okay with because I think that's better than blowing the play dead too early. Never blow too early. It's okay to let the play run because all scoring plays are reviewed, but 2012 just happened to be the first year that rule was implemented. Lions head coach Jim I Never Harnessed the Power of the Schwartz was so angry that Justin Forsett was clearly down both with an elbow and a knee that he threw a challenge flag. There's already a challenge flag out, which you don't need to challenge a touchdown. All plays have to be verified. But here's where it gets really messed up. At the time, if you threw a challenge flag on a play that was an automatic review, you were penalized. Twice. You received a 15 yard penalty and then they would refuse to review the play. So the play stands no matter what. Elbow, forearm, he's gonna be down. Yes, he is down. 15 yard penalty on the kickoff, but the play is not reviewable. Touchdown. Why the fuck would the NFL do that? I don't know, but they did. And it handed the Lions opponent a touchdown that shouldn't have counted because Essentially, their coach threw a piece of fabric on the ground at the wrong time. Week one of the 2021 season, Joe Judge did the same thing. Uh, it was Giants versus Broncos. He tries to challenge a Broncos touchdown, which you still can't do nine years later, and Judge was robbed of a timeout. So yes, the NFL corrected the punishment to fit the crime, but the Lions were the poor bastards that had to show the worst case scenario play out. They should be called the Detroit Lab Rats, the way the NFL uses them for testing. But wait, there's more. Back in 2015, I did an entire video about a horrible missed call by the officials that cost the Lions a win against the Seahawks. And as he dove to try to make it over the line, Cam Chancellor pops the ball out of Calvin Johnson's hands. The ball bounces into the end zone and the Seahawks, KJ Wright, pops it out of the back of the end zone. It's ruled a touchback. Seahawks get the ball, go on to run out the clock and win the game. But there's some controversy now because apparently nobody knew this. The Lions coaching staff didn't know. The Seahawks coaching staff didn't know. And if they did, they didn't fucking tell anybody. The referees didn't know, especially this referee staring at the play happen that you cannot bat the ball out of the end zone. It's a penalty, and the ball should have been given back to the Lions on the one yard line, and they would have had a fresh set of downs, and they probably would have won the game. Every team deals with bad calls. Human error will occur, but for the Lions, it's just a way of life, and it always seems to come at the worst time, and or be big enough that it robs them of a victory. Here's an all-time blunder. Lions, Cowboys in the playoffs. That's right, I did not make a mistake. The Lions were somehow in the playoffs. And they were, they were victimized. The officials initially made the correct call, but pick up this flag for pass interference on third and one. Anthony Hitchens clearly face guarding here, and he holds tight end Brandon Pettigrew. Matthew Stafford gives the official an earful. How does that get overturned? Hey, that's unbelievable. Congratulations. It's unbelievable. Can we explain that or no? Just flat out overturning a pass interference call? I understand, but your man saw it and threw the penalty. This play was so bad, the president of the United States, who's a Bears fan, was forced to defend the Lions. Even a Bears fan has to admit that that was a little suspect.
I, I, I had never seen anything like that before. I, I, I would have been pretty irritated. But all I can say, because I'm used to saying this, I'm a Bears fan, there's always next year. The Lions could have had a playoff win had the officials just done their job correctly. Instead, their 29-year playoff win drought is stronger than ever. All because Jerry Jones had probably already given the officials 10 times more money than he's given to any of his illegitimate children. Another playoff game, following the 2011 season, the Lions are in the wild card against the Saints. They actually have a 14 to seven lead and Willie Young hits a still moderately young Drew Brees causing a fumble. The Lions recover and would have returned for a touchdown had the officials not prematurely blown the play dead. Whistle blew before the recovery. That would have been a touchdown. The Saints went on to win that game 45-28, but had this play been called correctly, who knows what the Lions could have done in this game. And when you think about it, Saints fans, maybe that Rams non-call is just making up for this. The Lions Chiefs game in 2019 is a masterclass in the NFL. Uh, officials refusing to make any calls in the Lions' favor. This was the year Kansas City went on to win the Super Bowl, which in turn started COVID-19. So in a way, you can say NFL officials are pro-pandemic. First, you had this tremendous touchdown catch by Kenny Galladay Road negated. Looks like a solid catch to me. The Chiefs were also handed a touchdown, a defensive touchdown on a bizarre play where the refs allowed the play to play out. A goal line fumble by Carrion Johnson. Is it? A play everyone assumed was down. It's pretty close. The issue here is the refs ruled it a fumble, so the fact that you can't tell the exact moment the ball comes loose hurts the Lions. Here's Dirty Dan Sorensen absolutely committing pass interference, which is not flagged. Another pass interference, not called. And a pass interference no call on the Lions' Hail Mary attempt. This is a game where the Lions balled, hanging with the best team in the NFL, and had it been properly officiated, maybe the best story of the week there and a win for the Lions. Instead, it's another tremendous Matthew Stafford performance where people claim he was just padding his stats. Then you've got the infamous Packers game in 2019, same year, zero time left on the game clock. The Lions are flagged for an Aaron Rodgers face mask. That didn't even happen. <laughs> that phantom penalty gave the Packers 15 extra yards and an extra play to kick the game winning field goal as they were down by just two. One of Aaron Rodgers most underrated skills is, is that he's mastered making his face mask look like a shoulder pad. Something he also taught to tackle David Bakhtiari. Right now he's on the shoulder pad, he's still on the shoulder pad. I'm trying to figure out, when does he actually put hands to the face there? He never did, Booger. He never did. And a man named Booger would certainly know when something was on somebody's face. The only reason Green Bay wins this game is this phantom illegal hands to the face call. So the Detroit Lions literally lose two different games to the Green Bay Packers because of two different phantom face mask calls. And I think Trey Flowers was actually flagged for two phantom face mask calls in the same game. And that is a terrible call. That's twice on Trey Flowers in crucial situations that the refs have blown the call. But here's the real problem. We all know the Packers are the better team. And yet they are still provided extra help from the officials to beat the Lions. Detroit is always playing two opponents. Well, three. Their opponent, the officials, and themselves. <laughs> now think about this. If both games I just mentioned in 2019 were officiated correctly, the Lions would have started that season 4-0-1, beating both the Packers and the Chiefs. Who knows what could have happened after that with that kind of momentum. Hell, the Lions are so cursed even the Falcons get the game deciding calls against them. The Falcons, week three, 2017, Golden Tate scores the game winning touchdown against Hotlanta. He definitely crosses the goal line and after review, the TD is negated. Then they do the automatic 10 second runoff. And with only eight seconds left on the game clock, game is over. In the play, the ruling on the field is changed. The ruling is, is touched down at the half a yard line. He was short 
of the goal line. You know how I know the refs botched this call? In the official NFL highlight video on YouTube, they purposely leave out the replay of Tate crossing the goal line. Now beyond the officials, beyond their own incompetence, the Lions' worst enemy may be the back of the end zone, a place they are never going to get the call of a catch and a touchdown. The Calvin Johnson call was so appalling, the NFL had to reconfigure the catch rule, which is why it's called the Calvin Johnson rule. It's maybe one of the most famous wrongly called calls for the Lions. I just mentioned Detroit's own incompetence, which is worth discussing for a second. As hard as I have been on these officials in these Lions games, deservingly uh, so, bad calls are magnified when teams cannot overcome them. And the Lions simply have never been good enough to truly bounce back from bad calls. My conclusion is yes, the Lions are definitely cursed. But part of that curse is due to the fact that they are never really good. It's a vicious cycle, one I hope Dan Campbell can break. Doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I will beat your ass. Now I started this video discussing Tucker's game winning kick in 2021. And that's where we will end. The play clock hit zero in that game, which it can do, but it hit zero and stayed at zero before the ball was snapped. Now I witnessed something similar happen to my Broncos back in 2018, when on a third and seven, the play clock hits zero, but the Chiefs were allowed to get the snap off. The NFL's explanation is basically, if a ref sees the play clock hit zero and then looks down at the ball and it's moving, they don't throw a flag. Denver lost that game. Now, for entertainment purposes, watching a kicker set an all-time NFL record for distance to win a game is far better television than watching, I don't know, a running back try and throw a Hail Mary. But the Lions have been dicked so hard so many times that nobody even notices anymore. It's expected, like vomiting after chemotherapy. And the Lions have terminal cancer, but without the mercy of ever actually dying. Lions head coach Dan Campbell filed a complaint to the NFL about the play clock expiring in that game. And as he stated shortly after the Lions loss, tomorrow I'll get an apology and it won't mean anything. The poor bastard didn't even get that. He got the NFL telling him the delay of game penalty is subjective. The NFL said some referees' eyes take longer than others to look at the game clock and then look down at the ball. The Lions got it so bad the NFL won't even admit when they take a win away from them because they're the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Sorry Lions fans, I hope to God your officiating woes change this season and Dan Campbell leads you to the playoffs. Uh, please subscribe here on YouTube, and if you want to check out another Balls Deep episode, it's up on the screen right now.